Hollywood, 1989. Amid the glitz and the glitter of a bustling young Disney world at the height of its golden age, the Disney MGM Studios was a star in its own right, a beacon for the show business elite. Then, something happened that changed all that. The time is now to celebrate 35 years of Disney's Hollywood Studios with the largest ever in-person gathering of those who created its magic. The Imagineers who brought you the great movie ride. Muppet Vision 3D. And of course, as you may recognize, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. We'll present never before seen stories and artwork from the Hollywood that never was but always will be. This event is somewhat unique in that it will offer a meet and greet and autograph session, as well as two days of star-studded panels and presentations. We invite you, if you dare, to register at stage89.com to attend this event either in person or via streaming, or just to get more information. And all event proceeds travel directly to Give Kids the World Village. This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks all around the world. But here now the news for March 4th, 2024. More scaffolding has been removed from Tiana's Bayou Adventure at the Magic Kingdom, revealing new fake foliage and moss on the facade. We previously shared a look at two new frog characters on a log behind construction walls. They're still there, and the rest of the briar patch has been transformed into a swamp, as you can now see in this photo that was provided by a friend of WWNT. A wall next to the ride's flume has been painted uh, with a mural of ingredients being added to the gumbo as well. There's no more scaffolding on the top of the former Splash Mountain. The facade has been transformed now into that plant-covered salt mine, uh, the Salt Dome, if you would, home of Tiana's Foods. Scaffolding has also been removed from the Mill House. The edges of the Mill House are now covered in moss and plants. These are fresh additions in the past few weeks. Though barely visible in photos, we now have an unobstructed view of the weather vane on top of the Mill House. The weather vane was designed by Louisiana master blacksmith Daryl Reeves. Work is much further along on Tiana's Bayou Adventure of the Magic Kingdom than it is at Disneyland as construction began a few months later in California and the mountain remains mostly bare at this time. Of course, uh, Walt Disney World's attraction will open in the summer. Uh, we'll see what that means. And then the Disneyland one will open later this year. Of course, uh, we tend to think it's going to be earlier in the summer, probably earlier than most think for Walt Disney World. Uh, there is no more scaffolding around the ride's drop or opening. We can see straight into the mountain, although there's not much to see except darkness. Several of Mama Odie's bottle lanterns are visible around the opening. The first lanterns were installed back in January. They suggest that the ride's climax will be set at Mama Odie's home, likely accompanied by Dig a Little Deeper. Work is also ongoing behind construction walls at the Frontierland Railroad Station. The station's exit was closed for several weeks to be demolished and reconstructed. In January, the new stairs opened and the other staircase closed to get the same treatment. The basic framework of the new staircase is now in place. It runs against a wall and runs up to the uh, barn-like train station above. During construction, guests are entering and exiting from the same set of stairs. Inside the station, a construction wall blocks the opening to these non-existent stairs. The framework leading from the blocked doorway has notches for future steps. You may remember the old laugh-in-place play area beneath the train station. Well, that has been completely demolished. It is no more. Crews moved construction walls near the playground back closer to the station, but there are still rolling planters where the walls used to be, blocking a significant break in the concrete. The play area space has been paved with new flagstones. A sign about the play area remains on a nearby column. There's also a painted sign pointing to the restrooms behind the station. The ceiling under the train station has bright orb lights attached to the ceiling fans and lanterns along the walls. And the new flagstone path matches the completed sections of the Tiana's Bayou Adventure queue that uh, were revealed over the past few months. 
A paved section of sidewalk curves under another part of the train station. This sidewalk has wrought iron railings around it. Some yellow pool noodles cover uh, poles sticking out of the edge of the railings. A uh, silver railing is sitting on the ground next to the sidewalk. It looks like it would go on the stairs. And then materials for more flagstones are, are on the side of the sidewalk. So um, they are plugging away. Not a whole lot of time left, honestly. It'll be here before you know it. Things that are here already, the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival kicked off on Wednesday. We, of course, have a ton of coverage for you uh, right here on the channel. You can watch our video review where we try every single new item. We also have something a little more abridged due to popular demand. We've done a uh, the seven best and the seven worst of the new items at the festival. You can watch both of those videos right here on our channel. For said International Flower and Garden Festival, the Living with the Land attractions greenhouses have new scenes inspired by classic Disney stories, including The Little Mermaid and Alice in Wonderland. In the first Living with the Land greenhouse are props and set pieces inspired by The Little Mermaid. A fishing net hangs over bamboo shelving featuring plants, a globe, a pipe, and a candelabra. The candelabra has silverware instead of candles, uh, together with the pipes referencing items Scuttle would give to Ariel. Next is a set inspired by Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, wishing Well has been installed under a trellis covered in plants, and there are garden gnomes representing the Seven Dwarfs. A dove is perched on the edge of the Wishing Well, and on the table nearby is a pie and a basket of apples. The apples are mostly green, but there's one red apple referencing the film's poisoned one. There's also a crate of flowers and gems with a lantern and pickaxe representing the gems of the Dwarfs' mine. We noticed the Winnie the Pooh picnic last week. There's a plethora of food and plants in pots inspired by Winnie the Pooh's uh, friends. There's also a honey pot. And new to the scene is, is Rabbit's Garden. A large planter box is full of carrots. That's K-E-R-I-T-S and lettuce, L-E-T-U-S. Rabbit's misspelling of carrots and lettuce. The final scene is inspired by Alice in Wonderland. There are giant playing cards and a tea party in the edible flower garden. A tiny blue caterpillar figure is hiding in a plant. And the playing cards include a queen of hearts. They hang from the ceiling. And this table is uh, set with a checkered tablecloth, colorful teapots, and tall candles. And mushrooms are among the clovers on the ground. And Alice in Wonderland book sits on the chair. And a pot on the ground resembles the Mad Hatter's top hat. We also spotted the Cheshire Cat's face blending in with these white planters nearby. You can watch the full video of this overlay of Living with the Land right here on our channel. This is nice to see. Obviously, the, the holiday overlay has really taken off. It started as just a cute thing that Cass did just to liven up the attraction. It's become a very official overlay, a very official overlay at this point. Um, and now we've got this one, which, you know, this is a this is a nice little start. It could become more, and I think it's great. I think um, this attraction to interact more with each festival would be a really cool offering. As part of the celebrations for Women's History Month at Walt Disney World, the Sunshine Seasons at Epcot is serving a Moana milkshake. Sunshine Seasons is, of course, a cafeteria-style eatery inside the Land Pavilion. The Moana Milkshake is $8.99. It's orange cream milkshake with whipped cream, seashells, pearls, and a Moana coin. You can read the review at WDWNT.com. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest Vacations and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and their team will design your next magical vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. And the best part is their concierge services are 100% free, so book today. New Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind merchandise is available at Epcot, some of it parodying the 1985 comic book Mickey and Goofy Explore the Universe of Energy. The new items are available at the Treasures of Xandar in Epcot at the exit of the attraction. Kind of. It's outside. Uh, so far, we found a t-shirt and a magnet in this collection. The t-shirt is $34.99. The front of the shirt is white and printed on the left breast is a logo featuring Spaceship Earth and, and Star-Lord's first ship, the Milano. The same logo is featured on other Cosmic Rewind merchandise we talked about recently. The Wonders of Xandar Pavilion, of course, replaced the Universe of Energy, which opened with Epcot Center in 1982. The attraction became Ellen's Energy Adventure, still the Universe of Energy, in 1996, before closing forever in 2017 to make way for this attraction. 
On the back of the t-shirt is a rectangular poster-like design featuring cartoon versions of Groot and Rocket. Outside the wonders of Xandar, the text reads, Rocket and Groot explore the wonders of Xandar, presented by the Nova Corps. The current Epcot logo and wordmark are on the top left corner. This, of course, is all directly inspired by the cover of Mickey and Goofy Explore the Universe of Energy, which you're looking at now. Groot and Rocket's positioning even mirrors Goofy and Mickey's. In the comic, like the attraction, was presented by Exxon, and so now um, there's no real sponsor for this attraction. So they put the Nova Corps, who is sort of the fake uh, organization <laughs> presenting this attraction. Uh, there's also a parody magnet for $12.99. Uh, and as well, Guardians of the Galaxy has a retro cassette ear headband, uh, somewhat unrelated, for $39.99. The center of the headband features a patch of a cassette labeled Awesome Mix Volume 1. The bow is made of a material that looks like the tape inside of a cassette. So um, younger people watching a cassette was this device. <laughs> Never mind. The color scheme, also Epcot Center was, I gotta explain a lot of things. The color scheme throughout the years references retro Epcot Center graphics, a common scheme found in all that new merchandise. On the left ear is, a, uh, is the Guardian's logo, and this ear features the same stars and music notes as the right ear. And the back of the ears continues these stripes and a galactic design, including uh, the Guardian spaceship. And the exterior of the headband has an orange faux leather, and the interior is a velour-like non-slip fabric. Um, you know, it's, I think it's, it's ironic that they're doing a parody of Universe of Energy um, paraphernalia. I don't know what to call it. Um, it wasn't a thing that was sold. Um, but they're doing a parody of that, which has the Nova Corps as the sponsor. But in total, the whole thing is a parody of what Epcot is, right? It's a pavilion that doesn't teach you about anything real. You learn about a fake culture. Um, and so they, they, the parody has come full circle with this merchandise, like, look, I'm a fan of the merchandise. Anytime we could reference Epcot Center, that's great. But it does point out, look, Guardians is a fantastic ride. Tremendous attraction. But does it fit in Epcot? No, and I think the merchandise kind of points that out, that it's kind of anti-Epcot to teach people about a fake culture. And don't, don't get into the Big Bang thing with me. It's very, you know, it's very... Um, it's like an introductory course. It's the bare minimum. It's what kids learn in first grade about the Big Bang, right? Is all we get at Epcot. So that's not that's not edutainment. That's just finding a reason to make your project fit into the park. But uh, let me know in the comments if you want to argue with me about it. But I, I I'm not I'm not dropping this one. Doug and Russell from Pixar's Up have returned as meet and greet characters at Disney's Animal Kingdom. They greet guests at Doug and Russell's Wilderness Explorers Clubhouse on Discovery Island near the Tree of Life. Each character appears separately, and guests wishing to meet both characters will need to wait in line twice. The clubhouse has a covered queue and a meeting area. Uh, the, this marks Doug and Russell's return as meet and greet characters. Since 2022, they've only appeared on the Adventure Flotilla. Uh, the two characters rotate throughout the day. Currently, there are no schedules posted on the My Disney Experience app or the website. But cast members said the schedule the day we went was 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., but that is subject to change. Fans of Up can also find Kevin, of course, roaming around Dinoland USA and beyond. Disney Vacation Club members have a new Welcome Home Center to visit located in Disney Springs. Opening on March 2nd, the uh, Disney announced a new uh, Vacation Club Center called Gateway to Discovery via their social media channel, saying the following, We're thrilled to announce the opening of Gateway to Discovery, a Disney Vacation Club Welcome Home Center. Located in the heart of Disney Springs, this new space serves as an interactive portal to discover new vacation destinations with Disney Vacation Club. And opening later this spring, a space on the second floor for members and guests to gather. Stay tuned. The new DVC Welcome Home Center can be found in the town center area of Disney Springs next door to Francesca's and across from Frontera Cocina and the Disney Springs Welcome Center. It takes the space of the former Alex and Ani retail location that closed in January. Um, a couple things we have to note here, number one. Um, this is the new thing DVC is rolling out, right? So there is a very similar concept coming to what was the Blue Sky Cellar at Disney California Adventure. So um, this is similar to that. Um, yeah, there will be a lounge upstairs, but they have said this is not the new member lounge that they talked about earlier this year. So it sounds like we're getting a new park lounge somewhere um, at some point, but uh, this is not it. But this will be a place where members can lounge on that second floor uh, eventually. Um, but yeah, these are these, these sort of bigger, um, 
I don't know how to say it, just, just a nicer sales location for them to welcome people in and tell them what Disney Vacation Club is, and et cetera. Um, so now that we've seen two of these pop up, I assume um, we're probably going to see more, but maybe, maybe one per resort. Maybe that's the idea. So one at DCA uh, for Disneyland Resort, the one at Disney Springs for Disney World. We'll wait and see, but... Nonetheless, it's it's now there. You could re, you could look at a full tour at WWNT.com. We have a ton of photos. There's even some uh, recycled props, some from the World of Disney store as it used to exist at Downtown Disney. Easter season is upon the Walt Disney World Resort, and the annual egg displays are now in place through April 1st. We'll start at one of the participating locations, Disney's Contemporary Resort. There are two eggs located near BVG on the fifth on the fourth floor of the Grand Canyon Concourse. Uh, there's Fantasia and a Mickey popcorn bucket egg. In the lobby, there are some returning eggs, the Easter Bunny, the Lion King, a beehive, pirates. Uh, this is a returning design from last year, but with the octopus in a new color. There's the golden egg, the Easter Bunny as well. And then for new eggs, there's a 2024 cast member names egg, a Wreck-It Ralph Sugar Rush egg, a birdhouse, uh, Mr. Potato Head from Toy Story, Under the Sea, Wally and Eve, and The Nightmare Before Christmas, Minnie Mouse, Walt Disney and Mickey, a Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Up, and It's a Small World. Of course, there are also egg displays at other resorts. We'll now move on to the Grand Floridian, where the Grand Cottage is now open. The 2024 eggs, uh, egg display there is also, again, completed. The Grand Cottage is a snack stand in the lobby that sells Easter treats. The stand is open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily through April 1st. The treats can be previewed in a display case near the cottage with pricing so guests can decide what to order before they get in line. For returning eggs in the lobby, there's a character collage. There's Munchlings, the Princess and the Frog, Bambi, Alice in Wonderland, the Sword in the Stone, Daisy's House as well. Then for new eggs, there's a Pixar character egg, Disney Eats, a Baby Dragon. Uh, from the Emperor's New Groove, it's Cat Yzma. There's Onward. Uh, for Toy Story, there's Al's Toy Barn, Beauty and the Beast, the Disney Villains, uh, Snow White Model Sheet, a Koi Pond, Jasmine's Palace from Aladdin, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is the one everyone's talking about, though, as this egg actually lights up and flashes. And, um, and I think it's better than the ride. Uh, <laughs> Going to get a lot of hate, a lot of hate comments today. Meanwhile, at the Beach Club, they have seven pieces on display. This egg rep resembles a green topiary on a stone base. There are flowers around the base and inside the egg, and golden filigree is around the opening. And inside are topiaries of Minnie and Mickey in their classic red outfits. And sunflowers are on the inside of the egg behind them. Next to the Mickey and Minnie egg is a blue egg with pink cherry blossom flowers appearing to grow over it. There are three small eggs in a nest on top. The base resembles a green field. The Groot-inspired egg is hard to photograph uh, with the sunlight streaming in, but it does resemble the Groot topiary currently as part of the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. A young Groot is depicted standing on top of a leafy green egg. He's holding up a vine-covered cassette labeled Greenhouse Mix Volume 1. Next to Groot is a relatively small egg. It appears to be a cottage house made out of sticks with a stone pathway leading to the door. There's a spool of thread and buttons on the ground next to the pathway. Um, that egg, I think, is meant to represent the fairy homes that are often part of the Flower and Garden Festival. Meanwhile, the Japanese dragon topiary, also from the event, is depicted on this egg. It appears to swim in front of the, Japan's, uh, the, in front of the Japan Pavilion's Tori Gate. The egg is on a base resembling a red container on a tree stump. Cherry blossoms are all around the image of the dragon. A dark brown egg wears a ring of pink and white flowers. Large flowers are on the top of the egg, and the silhouettes of butterflies fly over it. This display features chocolate Chip and Dale topiaries. Chip stands on top of an overturned basket with carrots spilling out of it. Dale stands on a fake dirt base with some carrots growing around him. Chip and Dale have round egg-shaped bodies. And then meanwhile, the last egg in this display resembles a, tea, a teapot that has been turned into a house. It has green leaves on top of it and mushrooms growing around it. Some flat mushroom caps create steps to the hobbit hole-like door of the teapot. An orange butterfly is on the branch growing through the teapot's handle. Again, that's more of the fairy garden uh, display. The eggs at Dizzy's Yacht Club are also on a table behind a fence. The display is inspired by Moana's island home of Montanui. There are tall trees in the egg frame and detailed shrubbery across the base. Moana is pictured with her mother. An egg featuring Moana's boat is in the center of the display. There are tiny eggs in the boat like it's a nest. It sits on a wavy blue base. A small chocolate egg resembles Moana's pendant that holds the heart of Tefiti. It's a blue orb with a gray decorated top. A brown rope necklace appears to be strung with pearls. 
One piece features three eggs made to look like the Kakamora people. They are coconuts with painted faces and makeshift helmets and weaponry. Smaller eggs are around their feet. This egg is decorated to look like Moana's pig friend Pua. Pua sits in a nest of leaves and pink flowers, and eggs are at their feet, and they balance some of on their hands. Moana's pink seashell is perched on the top of this egg. Uh, the side of the gray stony egg features Tafiti symbol appearing to glow against a blue oceanic background. The Moana logo is set at the bottom. Tafiti's wave-shaped symbol is also on this Taka-inspired egg. It's black with smoke-like tendrils. It sits on a wavy base. The manta ray spirit of Moana's grandmother is on the top of this egg, which is painted to look like a starry sky. and even has a hidden Mickey. A sailboat with Tafiti's symbol on the sail uh, is in the ocean next to the egg. A tiny egg version of the turtle Moana helps at the beginning of the film is on the table between two larger displays. And the last egg is decorated to look like Tamatoa. He's holding Tafiti's heart between two of his claws. Uh, gold covers his top half, which makes him shiny. Willie Jackson has been crowned the most complimented cast member at Walt Disney World for the second year in a row. With over 1,000 cast member compliments in the last year alone, Willie received the honor of most complimented cast member in celebration of World Compliment Day on March 1st. Jackson is a PhotoPass photographer for Walt Disney World and can be found snapping photos of guests at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I like to be a director or producer, and when I get guests to me, uh, they really are my actors, Jackson told Fox 35 Orlando. I try my very best to show them certain areas they can pose. For those unaware, cast member compliments are a way for guests to recognize and send some magic to any cast members who make their day special at the parks. Jackson has been a Walt Disney World cast member for 14 years, working as a PhotoPass photographer for the last six. His secret to getting so many cast compliments? Always having fun on the job. I use this magic word all the time. I'm going to have some fun with you, he explains in a Disney Parks Instagram post celebrating the day. Receiving so many compliments comes as a shock to Jackson. I still am surprised because, like I said, I'm only being Willie, just being myself. I can't be anybody else, he said to Fox 35. And the joy he brings to guests each day can only be matched by the joy he feels himself. I always tell people all the time, I ain't going to ever stop smiling. I'm going to smile the rest of my life. I won't let nobody take this away from me. You can visit Willie Jackson on your next visit again um, to Hollywood Studios. He's usually taking photos outside the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. It's a good spot. Disneyland Resort is looking to buy Magic Way, a street near the resort from the city of Anaheim, so they can use the space for the Disneyland Forward project. According to Orange County Register, Anaheim residents raised concerns at a January City Council meeting about Disney purchasing and then demolishing the street. In response, Disney had engineering consultants uh, Kittleson and Associates conduct a study of the street from January 31st to February 4th. Consultant Joe Haupt presented the data during a planning commission workshop on Monday. Of the 11,153 vehicles that traverse Magic Way on a daily basis, Haupt said, 11,053 of them are either departing or arriving at a Disney property. Less than 100 are non-Disney users. Those less than 100 vehicles are mostly using the 1,150-foot Magic Way as a cut-through during the peak hours of the day. Magic Way is located to the west of Disneyland, connecting Disneyland Drive and Walnut Street. It's mostly used by guests heading to and from the Pixar Palace parking structure and the Disneyland Hotel. Kittleson and Associates found that on one Friday morning, less than 200 vehicles turned on the Magic Way from Walnut Street, and only about 30 continued from there on the Disneyland Drive. One of those drivers may have been resident Randy Lewis, who lives across the street from Disneyland Resort. Lewis said that for two years he has used Magic Way as a shortcut to the 5 freeway during his daily commute, calling it a fantastic time saver. Not using Magic Way adds 15 minutes to his drive, and he asked the city council to not sell the road. Haupt also shared plans to improve pedestrian crossing on Walnut Street for guests walking to the Disneyland Resort. Currently, there is, a, is no protected crosswalk on the four-lane street. The plans include a crosswalk that would have car, a car stop for pedestrians, as well as a separate bicycle lane. Disney is also hoping to buy Hotel Way to the southeast of Disney California Adventure and part of Clementine Street to the east. Haupt said these streets are essentially driveways to Disneyland Resort parking structures. Disney is committed to paying $40 million for all three streets. Anaheim Planning Director Ted White said surrounding streets have enough capacity to absorb Magic Way's traffic. And Anaheim Public Works Director Rudy Amami 
uh, said at last month's city council workshop that work will begin this summer to improve traffic flow at the nearby intersection of Walnut and Ball Road. Hopp said that if the city approves the Disneyland Forward proposal, there is no set date for when construction would begin. Disney has promised to invest a minimum of $1.9 billion in the resort, with further investments uh, going back to the city, including $30 million for affordable housing and $8 million for parks, and potentially more if they don't spend the $2.5 billion. The Planning Commission will vote on the Disneyland Forward proposal at their next meeting on March 11th. Um, I certainly get that person's point, but... The needs of many often outweigh the needs of the few, um, you know, and if that study is to be believed, which I think it is based on the time I've spent in that area, um, then I, I think it's, it's integral to their expansion at Disneyland. So, um, you know, let us know in the comments how you feel. I know, I know some people in Anaheim are angry about it, but I don't, I think for the most part, if you've been to Disneyland Resort, you agree they, they lack the sense of the bubble that most of the other Disney resorts around the world have, and this would go a long way to making that happen. All four tiers of the Magic Key Passes will go on sale again on Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. The online queue will open no earlier than 8.45 a.m. Pacific time, and sales will begin no earlier than 9 a.m. Pacific. Passes were previously on sale on January 10th. Three out of the four pass types sold out within the day, and sales were completely halted by the next day. So you'll want to hurry. A new culinary experience for children ages 3 to 11 has debuted at the 2024 Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival. It's confection perfection with the Super Kitties. Super Kitties is a Disney Junior animated series following a group of four kittens with superpowers who help solve problems around Kittydale. It premiered in 2023 and was recently renewed for a third season. Confection Perfection with the Super Kitties is held at the Hollywood Backlot stage. Registration is required for children to actively participate. Sign up begins 45 minutes prior to showtime. Those showtimes are Monday through Friday, 1.30, 2.30, and 4 and 5 p.m. On Saturday and Sunday, it's only presented at 1.30 and 2.30 p.m. The show is hosted by Jess Kitten, get it, who has many puns to deliver, including her name. The children who are given paper chef hats are there to help make birthday cupcakes for the Super Kitties' number one fan, Pickles, after the birthday cake is stolen. The Super Kitties only appear on screen, and while the Super Kitties have appeared as costume characters for Disney Junior Live, they are not in person for this experience. Minnie Mouse, however, does show up in person to find Figaro, who was invited to the Super Kitties party. I think Figaro's a Super Kitty. Uh, the, show has, the show has a moral to the story, of course. The cat burglar stole the cake because he was upset he hadn't been invited. Super Kitties decide to invite him to the party. His birthdays are for sharing, and no one should be left out. And yet, uh, Bitsy is taking that to heart. Uh, since the Super Kitties recovered the cake, all the junior chefs are then invited to take the cupcakes they decorated during the show home. You can watch the full video of this show right here on our YouTube channel. Those of you with little ones, I think, will enjoy it. Those of you without, maybe, maybe skip this one. And yes, I am a content creator telling you to skip one of my videos that I sat there and filmed surrounded by helicopter parents. <laughs> Don't watch my video. No. No, check it out. If you're curious, check it out. You've heard us talking about renting DVC points through our friends at DVCRentalStore.com. Well, if you've rented points and gotten a taste of the DVC lifestyle of a Walt Disney World vacation, you might be thinking that it's time to jump in and join the club. But did you know you don't have to pay the price uh, Disney charges for a DVC membership? You can save thousands of dollars when you buy resale contracts. Contact our friends at DVC Resale Market to find out how much you can save. Go to DVCResaleMarket.com slash WWNT for more information. Uh, this is how I became a member. I, I own a, a contract at the Polynesian, and uh, we bought it at half the price, basically. Um, and we got to do the, the, you know, we got to do the bungalow, and, and uh, it's my favorite DVC. So um, definitely check out if you want a good deal. Mickey and his friends are debuting new outfits at Castaway Key, the private island guest visit during Disney Cruise Line sailings. The gang all have bright and colorful new outfits. Previously, they wore light blue shades, uh, but they now have different color schemes. The outfits still retain a beachy spirit, though. Minnie is in a light blue dress with stripes of pink, orange, and dark blue on the skirt and sleeves. A dark blue ribbon around her waist has white embroidery and a ship's wheel charm. Her shoes are red with multicolored laces. She also wears red sunglasses with a yellow bow. Mickey has traded his, embro his embroidered shirt for an orange wave printed tee and striped blue overshirt with yellow buttons. He wears red shorts with orange stripes down the sides. His blue sneakers are paired with blue socks, and he has a yellow ball cap featuring the Disney Cruise Line logo. 
Daisy is just as stylish as ever with a wrap dress striped pink, red, and orange. It has a purple trim and a teal green belt with fish and a life preserver charm. She wears a teal undershirt, dark blue wedges, and a large pink sun hat. Donald's new rash guard is covered in a wave pattern of blue and teal. The neckline appears to have a drawstring with a life preserver hanging from the ends. He wears yellow floaties featuring octopi and a snorkel with goggles. Chip and Dale are channeling pirates with their new looks made of materials found around the island. Chip's has a pink and orange color scheme with touches of teal, while Dale's is blue and teal with touches of orange. Chip has on a pointed hat made of a towel, a life preserver vest, striped swim trunks, and a fishing net uh, sash. Dale wears a, a green bandana, blue tee, striped swim trunks, and a sash of floaties. Goofy has a sporty look uh, with a yellow sun hat, green wave pattern vest, and striped tee over blue shorts. Pluto's new collar isn't very visible in the photos, but it appears to be red, and uh, Disney Parks blog teased that it has a fish design inspired by the fish uh, posted outside staterooms. For comparison, uh, here's a picture of what their costumes looked like before, but uh, as of right now, they've made the switch. These costumes are available to meet the characters in now on Castaway Key. Uh, keep in mind at Lighthouse Point, um, they will have their own unique costumes. So both islands will have totally different costumes for you to meet the characters in. The Disney Parks blog shared that the signature song for the newest Disney Cruise Line ship, the Disney Treasure, is now available on music streaming platforms. The song, titled Live the Adventure, is sung by award-winning singer-songwriter Jordan Sparks. It was written by uh, Dwayne Whitmore Jr. and Chantry Johnson and produced by Brandon and Cadell. Live the Adventure features lyrical and instrumental nods of the Disney animated film Aladdin, which serves as inspiration behind the ship's grand hall. Disney Cruise Line fans can stream the song now on Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music. The song is also available on the Instagram Music Library for use in feed posts and Instagram stories. The Disney Parks Instagram used it in a reel, uh, which you can watch on our website. The Disney Treasure will set out on its maiden voyage, as will I, on December 21st, 2024. So stay tuned. I love theme park related theme like, like it's a cruise ship but anything in the disney parks realm when they make a theme song um it's my favorite yeah it's it's corny and cheesy but it's part of the flavor of this whole thing right um tokyo disney sea every port has a theme song and they're corny and cheesy but i love them um and then you know back in the olden days of the magic kingdom th there were stage shows that had theme songs for each land in the park too um, so I love that the treasure got a theme song. Reminds me a little bit at times of the 25th anniversary song they had. I think there's even some of the same lyrics in it. Um, but nonetheless, this is cool. And Jordan Sparks returning to the Disney Parks family. You may remember Jordan uh, used to appear in the American Idol Experience at Disney's Hollywood Studios. There was a music video towards the end of the attraction where she appeared with, um, this is going to be a throwback, the Sorcerer's Hat, a Backlot Tour Tram, and Mulch Sweat and Shears. I'm very old. I remember all of those things. <laughs> For the first time ever, Tokyo Disney Resort will host their own Tokyo Disney Sea Food and Wine Festival, which will come with its own collection of exclusive merchandise. Running from April 1st through June 30th, the Tokyo Disney Sea Food and Wine Festival will have food inspired by the different ports of Disney Sea and feature creatively, uh, creatively designed special courses, set meals, and snacks. The festival's full menus were released in mid-February. You can read them on our website. The merchandise collection for the festival features Chef Mickey and can be purchased at Steamboat Mickey's inside of Tokyo Disney Sea. There's a postcard, a sticker, a file folder, a magnet, and a T-shirt. And uh, I will be there to bring you the first ever food and wine festival from Disney Sea, even if you're not going to go. Um, we're going to cover it mostly in our vlogs on uh, the new channel, which we'll talk about soon. Um, we'll be launching that soon, but uh, can't wait to... to Check that out, their first ever food and wine. For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Inner Globe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. Special shout out to all of our WIGS members watching who make the show happen every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Did we already get rid of Wonders of Life? When it's maintained. No, you can't get rid of How that. How dare you? Yeah, it's it's a, like a kid's jungle it's gym. It's a giant dome. It's like a kid's jungle it's gym. With, How uh, many with domes yellow... like that have you been in in your life? This Why are you not amazed by architecture?
<laughs> what? Stop. You? No, well, you two folks, please. please. No. Oh, God, you, you? you two of you is the worst. You, 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 Stop, you, please. Uh, we need to focus. Okay. This is a real problem. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 We are the champions.